right wing attack on education has done more than just make students a little less intelligent. It's completely dismantled a generation's critical thinking abilities, and that's exactly the kind of voter that the Republicans want. Joining me now to talk about this is Howard Nations. Howard, we saw an interview by Henry Garreau from Truth Out, and as I read the interview, uh, it was actually a story. It was a story that he did for Truth Out. And as I, as I was reading it, I thought about the idea that this is what we've talked about so many times, and that is the death of intellectualism in this country and the, tr and the toll that it's taken. Now, we, we, you know, sometimes you and I joke about the death of intellectualism in Texas and in the South and how it's, it's, it's laughable, except it's so sad. Yeah. But, this, uh, but, but Henry did a great story talking about what is the toll of all that? What was your take on that truth out story? Well, he's right. Critical thought, democratic discourse has degenerated in the United States, but it's been replaced by this celebrity culture that embraces banality in its finest forms. It's been replaced by politicians that assault our senses with careless, uh, with ceaseless repetition of talking points from political consultants. It all comes from focus groups. You have Sarah Palin with her Obamacare death panels. Uh, repetition, repetition. You have media talking heads like Glenn Beck and Ann Coulter and Rush Limbaugh who have found a fortune telling the uh, intellectually uninitiated what they want to hear. And then of course you have the echo chamber at Fox News who understand very well the power of repetition. They have talking points, talking points, talking points that are unencumbered by facts, reason, or critical thought. And the whole thing's just designed to perpetuate the big lie that we live in a post-racial democracy that's free of racism or militarism or privatization or invasion of privacy. Well, there used, there's a term that you, of course, that kicks out. There's called neoliberal. We've used right. it. People hear the term neoliberal, but really, what it what it, it, it what it addresses is the fact that we used to, as progressives, think about things like, is it important that we live in an enlightened society? Is it important that we think about things besides making money, purely making money and going to war all the time? And, and then all of a sudden, that progressive that used to be called a liberal made this bond with Wall Street. And now we have this thing called the neoliberal element, which is, you know, it's not that important that we educate our children. It's, it's not, it's not in, important that we build great law libraries and that we have, uh, that we have uh, great research facilities. It, it's just not important that we take care of things like our infrastructure and build parks. And, and so we've gotten so far down the road now, the toll is that, that our youth, I mean, the young people are having to pay for this, aren't they? I mean, the, the, this, the, what they're going through because of this, this big shift is, is pretty awful. It's true. The, our customary arenas of critical thought, which are our schools, our universities, public radio, and the media, under siege. And they've been replaced by market-driven talking points supported, uh, supporting positions of corporate America and the financial services positions. And lost in the process is the actual debate that we should be having regarding inequality in wealth, inequality in power, opportunity, and income. And as you say, victimized in this whole process, the American youth. There's a di distinct dichotomy in American youth among the affluent and the minorities and low-income whites. Youth is viewed today demographically. They're viewed for their purchasing power. They're a major consumer market. But if you're in that minority that has no purchasing power, what you end up with is degrading of the public schools, collapse of the safety nets, social safety net, economic safety net, and educational safety net, resulting in, in a, a downward mobility. Uh, to corporate America, if you have no commercial value, you have no value at all, except privatization of prisons, of course, and d detention centers. So what we have now is we have youth coming out that uh, we've become so focused on, you know, taking care of corporations, uh, feeding the war machine, that now the, the corporations have taken all the jobs out of the, out of the country. Uh, therefore, we, you have kids coming through col getting college degrees that can't get a job. Uh, you, have this, you have this focus on uh, most youth have grown up with this idea of buy and sell 
And so corporate America now has done the same thing with youth. I mean, you know, they, they're, 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 they're drawn to being, they're trained to be consumers. They're trained to look at the glitz and the glitter. And they're told it's really not that important that you understand big ideas like the classics. It's really not important in Texas, for example. What they've, do, they've done is changed the textbooks and removed critical thinking from the textbooks. Now, we're not making that up. We did a story on it. As a matter of fact, the latest thing is even more remarkable, where they tell the kids, you know, there's no such thing as global climate change. So what are we doing to these kids? What are they come? I mean, why would you hire anybody from Texas to work for your law firm? Well, you know, the result is exactly what you say, joblessness, inadequate education. Uh, the minorities being uh, targeted by the police. You have uh, decreased uh, opportunities to escape from all this. Solutions should include equal education, job training, adequate health care, but those things are gone by the boards. Uh, now you have uh, the situation you're talking about also occurred in Colorado. You had high school students who walked out in protest. They're protesting conservative censorship. Listen to this conservative censorship of United States history curriculum. The Denver Post reported that uh, they, they are trying to remove all mention of civil disobedience from the text, uh, from the classroom materials, anything that, that's teaching U.S. history. In a letter to a superintendent, one of the students said, I want honesty in my classroom and teachers want honesty in their classrooms. Uh, in Jefferson County and in, in Golden and in Arvada, uh, about 1,100 students walked out altogether, but teachers shut down high schools for two days. And the reason is they have this new conservative school board that wants to rewrite history to be more conservative. Uh, they say history teachers should be teaching nationalism, respect for authority, and listen to this one, reverence for the free markets. They should avoid historical events, civil disobedience, uh, social strife, and disregard of the law. In other words, they want to, in, in the U.S. history, they want to disregard the entire civil rights movement, they want to disregard the voting rights movement, and they want to disregard a thing called uh, the American Revolution. I think there's a little civil disobedience yeah, there. Yeah, so, so close down the idea of civil disobedience. God forbid our children should know that the only way we change things in this country <laughs> is go to the streets and raise hell. Now, okay, so that's a high school level. In colleges, you have, and by the way, the Koch brothers and that, that kind of right-wing bunch of fanatics started trying to uh, take over school boards all over the country. That's been going on now for almost 20 years, and yep. obviously it's successful. But at FSU, uh, a state university in Florida, the Koch brothers have bought an entire business school there where they make the determination of what's going to be taught, who the professors are, who's going to get hired, and who's going to get fired. You know, the FSU story, though, to me, tells it all. What's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction, Mike, is very personal because I happen to be a graduate of Florida State University. I did my undergraduate work there, and I have been a contributor to Florida State University over the years. But when they called me most recently, after you and I did the, the uh, earlier segment that we did a few weeks ago about the Koch brothers literally buying the business school, buying the curriculum at Florida State University, having say so over the uh, choosing the faculty, uh, they called me for additional contributions, and I said, what, why would you possibly need your small pittance from me? You've got the Koch brothers backing you. And I'm sorry, even though I graduated from there, I can't back a school that sells its business school to the Koch brothers. So the fact of the matter is, uh, I not only don't contribute anymore to my own university, uh, but I also took them out of my will for exactly a million dollars. So, I, <laughs> so, so there is there is some justice in this world, Howard. All right. Well, let's hope we can reverse some of this. Uh, it, it seems like a far stretch for us to do that because all we can really do is keep talking about it, keep it out there to where people understand that anti-intellectualism is alive and well and it's killing the youth of this country. Thank you for joining me, Howard.